Okay, this is a sort of unboxing for my Grand Seiko Spring Drive Diver SBGA231. This is the newer model that has the uh, Grand Seiko at the top and not uh, Seiko. And so they made a slight change on the dial. I actually like it because it's less busy, less wording on there. So this is showing you the packaging and how it comes and so on. Of course, I've already been wearing the watch almost a week. In two days, it'll be a week. I got it on Monday. And uh, it is just a fantastic watch. It's right on the second. It has not gained or lost a second in almost a week. So it's by far the most accurate watch I've ever had. And just mesmerizing to watch that second hand just sweep along. You'll see here at the end uh, when I have the watch shots. But this is just a, a packaging video, really just to show you the packaging. I'll be doing a more in detail review, but I'll give you a little spoiler alert. This watch is just fantastic. It really does. My initial impressions was it, it blew, blows away a Rolex Submariner. And the more I wear it and the more I observe it and study it and the more I research it, I'm more and more convinced that that is the case. Just the attention to detail, the quality of construction, the comfort on risk is a is on wrist is a big benefit to this watch because of the special titanium that they use. And by the way, this titanium, according to Seiko, is actually harder than stainless steel. There are people that are saying that it is not, but this is a special alloy that is very hard and holds up really well. Now, it will get scratches. I bought this for my heavy-duty watch. I wear my Rolex Day Date you know, a lot of the times during the day, but when I'm doing anything that would put that watch at risk, a sporting event or whatever, working in the yard, working on the car, this is the watch that I'll wear. And so it will get a fair amount of, not abuse, but heavy use. And it's going to get scratches and so on. I, I had the... Um, Seiko with the Dia Shield titanium, which is a different process. By the way, there's the pins that you use to uh, resize the bracelet. The Dia Shield is a different process than this titanium. It's a coating that makes it scratch resistant and harder on some of their uh, around thousand dollar price range watches. I have the video on the titanium one that I had, and it held up real well. But this is a different process. This is a different alloy, and this is not a coating. This is just a harder alloy. And the benefit to this is it can be repolished and so forth if, if it ever gets damaged or whatever, and you send it back to Seiko, they can repolish it, whereas the coated ones are, are trickier in that regard. So this is a step up, and only for the more expensive watches do they use this titanium. And there you're seeing how the clasp works and how you can extend it to put it over a uh, wetsuit and so on and so forth. Not that I'll ever do that. Not that most users will ever do that. Matter of fact, I might even at some point switch out this clasp for one that's less complicated and more trim on the wrist. That said, I'm getting used to this one. It's not, it's not really, it doesn't really bother me. The, the watch is really comfortable on wrist. That's the huge advantage of this titanium. This watch is every bit as comfortable as my 36 millimeter day date on wrist. And that watch is very comfortable on wrist. And this watch, you can just wear it all day. It just disappears. That's, the, in my opinion, that's one of the biggest advantage. That and the, the accuracy of this watch, where you can run it for 30 days and you know it's going to be within a second or two of, of where it needs to be. And that is just not the case with a Rolex. By the way, and back to those pins, they refer to those pins as uh, pins and collars. Some people refer to them as, but Seiko refers to them as pins and pipes. And basically, the way it works is those the little pin goes in from one side, and then on the other side, you, you press on the little pipe or the collar or the tube or whatever you want to call that little tiny thing. And that holds all the way around on the pin as a, a friction fit. And the advantage to using those pins to size instead of screws or friction pins, friction pins tend to wear out with s several resizings. They can lose their tension and then they can fall out. Screws can back out if they somehow you're, you know, 
you don't put them in tight enough or they just over time they just kind of back their, their themselves out if they do that and fall out you're you've kind of lost the screw whereas these pins and collars or pins and pipes they have a constant friction fit and they hold and they do not put wear and tear on the actual links of the bracelet so there are some real advantages to using that setup even though they're a little bit harder to change out there's some real advantages to using that setup hey please subscribe to my channel